As a business, Protlex taken the lead in black and white relations. Getting black and white to work together, getting black and white to speak. Some of the white people in the area hated me. How can you make a white guy work with a black guy? I grew up in a system that you were basically taught black people were bad. I remember as kids talking black people bled green, they didn't have red blood. When you look back on it now, it was naive, we were perfectly well brainwashed, but that happened, I can't change that. When I started Protrack, I believed poachers should be beaten, shot, jailed, all the rest of it, because they were black mainly, and they were killing animals. And then, as time evolved and I met more poachers, and, and actually in a funny way, learned to respect them, I wanted to know what motivated a person to come into a reserve where there's dangerous game, your big five lions, everything, at night with an assegai and dogs. Black people in South Africa, and we are a wealthy African country, don't have access to meat every day. And that's where I started looking a bit deeper from that point. Right, you know, in this country, white and black people don't even know how to shake hands yet. As a white person, if I shake hands with you, if you take my hand soft, that's a bad sign. It means you're a weak man. In a black culture, if I grab your hand hard and squeeze, like I'm taught, it means I'm aggressive. We still don't know how to shake hands in this country, but we're supposed to be living together, and it's been 20 years of democracy. Tumi will tell you, when we do a training course, we teach the black guys how to shake hands. What's your, last, what's your surname, Tumi? Morema. Tumi Morema. Now, you know, when I grew up, when I see an impala, it was like meat. The sort of the attitude of people living here, they see those animals like it's something they can just kill and feed themselves. You grew up here, so you must know a lot of the people that are poaching. Yes. So how do these people feel about you? Well, they used to talk to me, tell me, hey, you, you see you, you're gonna die, we're gonna kill you, stuff like that. It's horrible when your guy's done his job and you can't get him out of jail. And when he goes in jail, a lot of the prisoners they go in with the guys we've arrested. So he just gets the shit kicked out of him. I mean, Toomey spent, not this last Christmas, the Christmas before, he spent in jail. Policeman shot a guy and they blamed Toomey. And then you've got to motivate a guy like Toomey. And he's still here. Mad or good? And how do you feel about catching those guys that are doing what they essentially grew up doing? I'm not happy to catch that guy that he can go suffer in jail, but I'm happy that now he will understand and know that he's not good what he's doing. They don't have knowledge. They don't know about these animals. What is your weapon here? That's an Uzi. I've got that one because I'm driving and it's comfortable. Today you're going to go out there and tell your teams what yes. to do. Yes. Now what sort of dangers do you expect them to encounter? Obviously they must be careful of these animals which they protect you. The big five, lions, elephants, all those animals. So you first of all show them how to be careful for the animals that they're trying to protect. Yes. What is the most common form of poaching on this farm that you're going to patrol today? Dog poachers. Dog poachers? Yes. Dog poachers are difficult to catch. Sometimes they just come, put snares in the line, go around, look for animals, chase them with dogs into the snares. We work for landowners that are concerned. A landowner that's doing something dodgy or Mickey Mouse or under the table, he's not going to employ me. So I'm working for people that are serious. A lot of what us as European people do and call ourselves conservationists, we're just as wrong as what we refer to as a poacher. A, a 400 hectare farm, you fence all those animals in that little cage, what happens? Same impala breeding with the same impala. But we go there and drive our land rovers and say, look how wonderful we are. And the poacher comes in and he takes one warthog a month. We come down and decide, oh, we better shoot 15 impala this month. There's a lot that doesn't make sense where we could say to the poacher, come and hunt 15 impala this month. I mean, hunting has got a role to play in conservation. When the big boss put an impala here, it was yet to be eaten. He's put it here and said, eat it. It's part of the food chain. And as intelligent European people, we just keep trying to enforce the same rules. It's not working. And it's the same with poaching. We're never going to stop it, but we're always trying to look for new ideas to stop it and getting involved with communities, or sitting down, understanding you black, I'm white, but we've got a common goal here. We both love wildlife. Personally, what are you, what is your biggest fear out in the bush? Actually, I'm scared of the rhino poachers. You're scared of the rhino poachers? Yeah. Because they are most heavily armed? Yeah, they're most heavily armed and they organized. 
organized. The way they operate is scary. They come in with choppers. They will fly and be on top of the, the rhino. And the men just shoot, they land there, cut the horn. So if you see a helicopter that you're pretty sure is a rhino poacher, do you confront them? Yes, we definitely go into it. Definitely. <laughs> no, we're not with a doubt. Not a doubt? Nah. Fumi, you're a brave man. Actually, I don't, I don't feel like I'm working. I feel like I'm just leaving. All the teams that go out are black and white together. Our best units in the South African Army were black and white units. And our base track on that. Put black and white together, you won't beat it.